Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and on our next episode of Breaking Bread, our guest is gonna prepare sandwiches that you would die for. So don't go away. Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to Breaking Bread. On this episode, we have a guest, Michael Viola. How you doing? How are you, Michael? Good to see you, Monsignor. Thank you for How being you? here. It's great to be here. So, Michael, you like to cook? I do. I love to cook. I grew up cooking. Yeah, I love to eat, too, obviously. <laughs> we all do. We do. You got to cook if you're going to eat, right? That's great. So, um, I know that we're going to be making a lot of sandwiches here that, you know, to die for. I mean, as I said before, I mean, these look great. But tell me first a little bit about how'd you get into cooking? When did you start? Sure. Well, I mean, grew up Italian American. Okay. Um, watched my grandmother and my father. My father was a big cook. Um, he never he cooked in the service, so I kind of was glued to watching him and, and, and working with him. And then I just kind of got into a love of it. And I stayed home. I was home a lot by myself because my, both my parents worked. So sometimes I had to cook for myself or start dinner before my parents got home. Okay. And then I just wasted, survival. Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. <laughs> and then I and then I didn't waste any time, and I knew I liked it so much that right out of high school I went into culinary school, um, worked in some restaurants. I circle back through high school. I worked in a, you know, while I was going to high school, I was working in a corner deli, making chicken cutlets, meatballs, things like that, roasting turkeys, and uh, it just brought me right back to where I started, back to sandwiches and, and meatballs and chicken cutlets and stuff. That sandwiches are a huge part of my comfort food. I know comfort food could be fried chicken, meatloaf, right? But to me, it's a sandwich. Right. Uh, every time I take a bite out of a sandwich, it reminds me, of, you know, when I was a kid or working in a deli in high school. So that becomes my comfort food. It's amazing. We have we have similar backgrounds. I came from an Italian family. Right. My father liked to cook. My mother was a better cook, though. Right. But we cooked at home from when I was, you know, 9, 10, 11, I was cooking. In high school, I worked for a caterer. And then right after high school, I went to the Culinary Institute. And I worked for 10 years in hotels and restaurants before I went to the priesthood. But I mean, it was just growing up around food, having a passion for food and eating and a love for it. And, you know, I still do it now. I thank God for the last eight or nine years. The show has given me the opportunity to cook again. So it's, it, awesome. it's just wonderful. And, you know, I always say, if you don't love it, leave it. Because it, cooking isn't something that, you know, if you're doing it because you have to do it, it doesn't come out right. Yeah. If you put love and passion into it, it's always good. You almost want people to enjoy it more than you enjoy it yourself when you're exactly. cooking. Like you want people to be as happy as you are making it sure. as they're eating it. So now you've been doing... Uh, so right now I work, for, I work for a manufacturer, so okay. we manufacture meat and cheeses, and I do a lot of work uh, developing sandwiches, developing programs, developing products, um, and just you know bringing that... Creating. Bringing my, my, creating. Yeah, creating that, <laughs> or recreating that right. passion or that, that, uh, that comfort food that I had for others to, to taste as well. So. It's, it's kind of my whole life. I think somebody said it as I was walking in, I'm the sandwich guru or the sandwich, uh, oh, the sandwich guy. So I don't have any problem doing that, honestly. And that's a big thing today. You know, you walk around the city and you see all these sandwich shops, panini shops yeah, opening sure. up, uh, all new creative uh, sandwiches that we never saw. And we were growing up, bologna and cheese, right. you know, peanut butter and jelly and meatball and Italian, you know, still eggplant parmesan. Right. <laughs> I remember going to school and we would have the meatball and the eggplant parmesan sandwich and the grease, the oil would be coming out of the, the brown paper bag <laughs> and the other kids would be eating peanut butter and jelly and they'd be looking, laughing at us until we started eating it. Yeah. And then when they tasted, oh, this is good. Right. I said, yeah, we know it's good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mondays were always my favorite at school because Mondays were always meatballs. The meatballs, on white bread Because the exactly. leftover meatball from Sunday went on the sandwich from Monday morning. Exactly. So yeah. yeah exactly. So now tell me, um, you went to Catholic school? I did. 12 years at Catholic school. Right. Where did you go to high school? I went to Bishop Ford. Bishop, Bishop Ford, Ford Central right. Catholic High School. And Park Grammar Park. School? Immaculate Heart of Mary. Oh, so, Kensington. Yes, there, yes, right? yes, yes. My mother and her family grew up in that area. She went to that school. Four, all four of my uncles went to that school. So everybody knew. My grandparents, my, my grandparents were very heavily involved in, the, in the, um, the parish. My grandmother used to dress up as a clown. She was always at the bazaars and yes. working the thing. So everyone knew, oh, your grandmother was the clown. Yeah, yeah we remember that. And <laughs> She was a very proud lady. She used to walk around with the, she had a newspaper clipping and she was at the Immaculate Heart of Mary Bazaar as the clown, Yo-Yo the Clown. She used to carry it around and show it to everyone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we missed that. She passed a couple of years ago, but oh, sorry to hear um, that. great legacy that she left behind. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's how we grew up in the parishes. Every parish had a bazaar and everyone got to know each other. Yeah, and sure. It was wonderful. Now you have children? I do. I have two children that go to Catholic school as well. And wonderful. every year I head up the Christmas fair there. So we do food there. I have a recruitment, a couple other dads that I recruited. And it's the dads that run the kitchen. We make, you know, hundreds of meatballs and 
Uh, we do everything from meatballs to empanadas to jerk chicken to wow. anything that we can do because we have a diverse group at the school. So we try to make everyone happy. And so That's I look great. forward to that That's every wonderful. year. That's wonderful. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, yeah. you know, you're a product of a Catholic education yeah. and your children, you're sending your children there and you grew up in the parish and... That's wonderful. So what we're we gonna do here? I'm a, I'm a little So we hungry. got some great Italian sandwich. Well, we're gonna a couple of them. We're gonna twist up into Italian sandwiches. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I grew up on that. It kind of makes me think back to my childhood. So the first one we have is very very simple. It's kind of like an Italian grilled ham and cheese. Okay. So for the ham, we're gonna use a prosciutto cotto. So the difference between prosciutto and prosciutto cotto. Prosciutto cotto, cotto in Italian literally means cooked, right? Oh, right. So this is a cooked ham. It's roasted. Right. It's got some Italian seasoning on it, some rosemary, some oregano, uh, and it's slow roasted in an oven. So it's very tender uh, and it's got great flavor behind it. And there's a difference to prosciutto, which people just call prosciutto, but it's right. actually prosciutto crudo, I mean, which means raw, raw in Italian. Right. So not that it's actually raw, but it's cured, right? right. So the difference is prosciutto cotto becoming very popular again. So this one is gonna be a simple grilled cheese. We have some ciabatta bread here. Yeah, that's the best. And again, I love ciabatta, especially, I mean, this is a good time of year for it too, because it's not as humid as it's been. It's kind of been a little bit nicer. So when there's less humidity, you get that kind of like a right. nice crunch to it that you can hear. Right. And it's um, not doughy on the inside. No, that's it's kind of light it. in the inside. Very um, but it, airy but it holds inside. Up. Yes. Yeah, and it holds up very good to heat. So if you're gonna heat it up like we want to, kind of make a grilled cheese, it holds up great. So actually, we'll do two of them now. I'll put okay, one here. Right. I'll put one here. Now I see you have gloves on. I do. Because you're right. dealing with raw meat and raw we're cold dealing... cuts that we're gonna eat. Exactly. So the first thing, what I'm gonna do two different ways real quick. And again, this is gonna be a simple grilled ham and cheese. First thing we'll do is take a little bit of this pesto mayo. So this was just regular mayonnaise and pesto that you could buy in a store or make it yourself. My mother-in-law, she grows basil, tons of basil in the backyard. Right, make We'll pick pesto. it up this time of year, make a bunch of pesto, freeze it, or you can just buy it at the store. And mayonnaise is something, a base you can put anything into it. Absolutely. You wanna you know, put a little avocado in there, you know, sure. anything. It just put a little horseradish, anything. Just dress it up, make exactly. it a little different. Um, yeah, and you'll see we'll have another sandwich later that's just a mayonnaise base, but with a different flavor in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on here on the bottom, and I'm gonna leave this one empty for now, and we'll I'll explain why in a second, okay. right? And then again, so what I like to do, especially when we're gonna grill this up, and if there's two cheeses involved, I like to put the cheese on the top and the bottom, so it kinda acts like glue as it melts, it'll glue the sandwich together. So we have two types of cheese here. We have provolone, just standard provolone. You go to your regular deli, and you ask them for provolone. I mean, they have different types aged. This one's, slight, this one's a little bit aged, this one's aged eight months. It's not too expensive, it's not too crazy. Um, not too it's sharp? It's not very, very sharp. Okay. It's kind of in the middle. It's not, it's not mild, it's not sharp, it's kind of in the middle. Yeah, taste them up. Of course. And then we're gonna throw, we're gonna put some of this uh, prosciutto cotto on there. Good. Move this out of the way. Thank put you, sir. In there. Oh, we'll put that on there. Okay, I gotta taste a little piece. Taste a little prosciutto <laughs> cotto, tell me what you think of that. Mm. Very good. Excellent. Great, great flavor in there. Flavor and not too salty. Yeah, and that's another thing, not because they're not using salt to cure it. So right. yeah, it's not as salty as regular prosciutto. Yes. So there we have that, and we're gonna come back. This is some Asiago cheese. So this I is Asiago, Asiago Vecchio. So this is aged a little bit longer, a little bit sharper than North. I'm not gonna put a lot of that on there. So there's different it has types. a sharp taste to it. Right, there's different types. There's, there's Asiago Vecchio, there's the Asiago Prasado, which is kind of in the middle. So I'm only gonna put like two thin, thin slices on there. This is, this is pretty sharp, but it does melt great. So does the provolone. And so what I'm gonna do with this one, you have no, no mayo on that. I didn't put the mayo right. on there on purpose. So okay. what I wanted to do was, I wanted to invert this, flip it okay. inside out, and I'll tell you why. So you can do this inside out, right? And we'll do this later maybe with the Cuban as well. Now we have this inside out. It's got a kind of a flatter surface mm -hmm. to it. And I'm gonna do this because, there's two ways to do this now. We can grill this off in a pan with some oil. It's a little bit healthier, right? Uh, obviously, years of eating sandwiches and understanding the flavor and, and the fat that's involved I like to use my mayo on the outside of the bread and use that to kind of yes. crisp it up. Like so a that's a true cheese grilled cheese sandwich, exactly. right? Um, not exactly good for you, but the flavor is fantastic. So we're gonna do it both ways, just so everybody kind of has an idea. We're gonna put a little bit of this pesto mayo on one side, and when we put it in the pan, I'll flip it over, and we'll put the pesto mayo on the outside of the other one, and then flip it over and finish Once it. Once right? again, you'd be as creative as you want to be Absolutely. In cooking. Um, the ciabatta bread too. If, uh, it works with anything. You do it on white bread, it works just as good. Again, the cheeses as well. Asiago, provolone, great combinations. Mozzarella works great. Fresh mozzarella would look re right, really right, right. good. Uh, Passaggio, any kind of cheese that you want to really put in there, anything kind of works really well. So we're gonna take, I'm gonna take this one and we'll put it in the pan. Okay. Yeah. 
push it down. Push okay. it down a little bit. Give it a press. You want so a it brick? Gets nice and even. Brick. If you got a brick, that'd be great. <laughs> And uh, people have done that. You get a brick, you wrap it up in aluminum foil, and you put it on there. So we're going to do the same thing with the other piece. The other sandwich, we'll press it down a little bit, give it a little press just to kind of get it started, and then sit there and let it go. OK, we're going to take a break, and we'll be sure. right back. All right, I'll be here. In a minute, we'll come back, and I'm going to taste these wonderful sandwiches. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. I'm here with Michael Viola, and he's making us some delicious sandwiches. My God, I can't wait for lunch. <laughs> so, so this here is... Uh, we're ready to go. We're really? Yeah. About two to three minutes on each side, get some okay. nice color. The cheese is nice and melty. We just take try one out. out. Yeah, try it out. Now, this gonna, is the you, one where you put the mayo, the pesto mayo on the outside, You can go right? with the mayo on the outside. All right, good. That's what okay, I would go with, too. You can cut that in half. And then this one, pesto mayo on the inside. We'll cut in half, we'll cut in a few more. What do you think? Small, small, small. Small pieces, so we'll cut I them in I want to try all, every one of them. All right, so let's go in half and then in half again. Wow, that looks good. All right, so there's one for you. Okay. You get that, that small nice, one. The cheese, yeah, we'll give you another <laughs> one too. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, and then this one, we can taste it. It's, it's going to pretty much taste almost the same. Mmm. Cheese is just melting. I hope you can hear that. Mm. I did. This is like a true Italian ham and grilled ham and cheese, right? And this brings me back to working in my deli back in the, when I was, uh, you know, 14 I tell years you, old. This is a lot better than having a grilled cheese with American cheese. <laughs> to me, it is. <laughs> this is and not craft. No, it's not, <laughs> and it's simple. Very easy. Three ingredients. That's mm. it. Well, four. The pesto. Mm. That is excellent. Very good. Put these, here. Put these over here. Exactly. Right. Put this over here. I want to mix so it the, up. So the next sandwich we're talking about here. This one has a little story behind it too. I have a friend. His name is Joe. All right. And Joe, his dad is from Italy. He comes here, meets his mom, who is from Cuba. So he's mm. got Cuban and Italian roots. He recently, for the first time, went to Cuba, met his family for the first time, learned how to make Cubans, came back, made some killer Cubans. He made his own roast pork, um, got some ham, made them, I have a friend who owns a bar, made them at the bar, was selling them, they were fantastic. Kind of got me thinking, I like, I like the idea that this Italian guy, because he has an Italian last name, he was born and raised in Brooklyn, right. went to Cuba, made a Cuban sandwich. How can we take the Cuban and make it more Italian? That's my idea, Blend that was my together. inspiration. So this is the Joe Cuban, what I want to call it. So what I did here was I got a stuffed pork loin, which is kind of like a porchetta. Right. Um, and this one's stuffed with some prosciutto, some mozzarella cheese it looks, and some uh, some spinach. And then it's wrapped in pancetta. Huh? Okay. Normally a porchetta is wrapped in pork belly. This right. Is kinda, it is pork belly, but the whole belly. But that's kind of gelatinous. It's too much fat on the outside and with the pancetta wrapped pork loin, right? But it's the same cut of pork that they would use in a, okay. in a Cuban, basically. And then instead of regular ham, we're using some Genoa salami. Okay. Oh, and right. then instead of Swiss cheese that they use in a traditional Cuban, we're using some fontina, Italian fontina cheese, right? And then to replace and the pickles. And that's not as sharp as the yada No, yada. not at all. This is yeah. a little bit more creamy and a little bit nuttier, right. so a little bit a little grassier sometimes. And then instead of the pickles, we're using some pickled jardinier, which okay. is like a you know Italian vegetables. Italian vegetables that have been pickled, mm -hmm. right? This you can easily make at home, but you can actually buy it anywhere. But, right. You just take some vegetables, raw vegetables, make a pickling liquid, pour it on top, let it sit in the fridge overnight, you got jardinier, right. right? And then lastly, the kind of, the icing on the cake is this mustarda. It's an Italian condiment that's made with mustard oil. Mm -hmm. So instead of using yellow mustard, like I do on a Cuban, we're using this Italian mustarda. So what they do is they use mustard oil and mustard seed, and usually any kind of variation of fruit. Right. And that fruit kind of, so it's sweet, it's a little tangy, kind of like mustard. Um, it, not really hot at all, but it's just got that kind of that um, pickly, br that pickly that grindiness right, right. to it, which kind of lends it to the sandwich as well. It reminds me of the fruit you put in cakes and stuff. That's like That's exactly what that exactly. stuff is, except it's whole and they put it in the mustard oil. Mustard oil and so that's we, sweet. Right, so okay. we have that kind of contrast. The thing I love about this sandwich in general, not just this one, but of, of a Cuban as well, is that kind of contrast of all those different things going on. You got a little bit of smokiness sometimes from the meats, but then you have the sweet from, um, 
the mustarda, usually some of them, the yellow mustard has a little bit of sweetness, sweetness. to it. You got the pickled kind of brininess from, right. from the jardiniera and the muscle, on the mustard. So you have a mixture of all these kind of flavors. Wow. And what's this here? This look like a carrot? Uh, this is, I'm sorry, this is the, the jardiniera, but ground up. So it's easier to kind oh, of spread really? on the sandwich. Oh, so we're gonna okay. use that on the bottom. We're gonna spread it on the sandwich, kind of almost like a condiment. And then we're gonna drizzle that. that wow, that's a right great concept to, ground, to so grind it up. So if a Cuban and a muffaletta got married and had a baby, this, <laughs> this is, is, this is the baby, right? Because the muffaletta is traditionally served on focaccia. So we have these nice little focaccia rounds that have some rosemary on top. Right. Um, these have a lot of rosemary a on top. A lot of rosemary. We might want to scrape a little bit off of them, but this has got the, this is the focaccia. So you could do this on focaccia. I like it on focaccia, but you could do this on just regular Italian bread. Okay. Um, the ciabatta that we used earlier is, is it works great. I like uh, the focaccia, I like rosemary too. Yep, and it's we gotta, it's gotta be something off. again, because, it, yeah, absolutely. It's got to be something that's going to hold up to the heat. Right. So focaccia works really well with that. And so does the ciabatta as well. So here we are. Can we have these open, finally? And I got some of this jardiniere spread. We'll put that on the bottom. Okay. I'll take take that. some of that. Sure. I'm going to spread it out. I'm a little bit more generous than you are. Yeah, you put as much or as little as you want. This isn't a science here, you know? That's the good news. But I like uh, grinding up that uh, jardinier. It's great. This way you get a nice even yeah. spread and you don't have to worry about biting into a giant carrot or a giant right, cauliflower. Right, exactly. So I just took it. I mean, you can do it in a food processor. You can even just do it with a knife. Just chop it up nice and fine with a knife. So we have that. We're going to take some of these pieces of pork. Okay. Put them on there for you. You put it on there. I don't you have gloves it. on. Even though I'm going to eat it, so. <laughs> So we have this, the pork that's been you know, cooked fully, sliced up and chilled. And you have the spinach, mozzarella in there. It's got some spinach, got some mozzarella in there. It's got some, I think, some prosciutto as well. Okay. So we're really adding a lot to this. Actually with all the work that I do with sandwiches is that even coverage on a sandwich. You don't want to pile everything right exactly. in the middle. You don't want your first bite to taste different than your last bite, right? So you try to get that full coverage okay, on we'll everything. Itself. Put like three or four slices of the salami on there. Cheese, fontina. And we have so yeah, some fontina cheese on there. I like a lot of cheese. I'm gonna go a little bit more cheese, extra cheese on there. Now we're gonna take the easiest way to do this. Now we can chop up that fruit and spread it on like we kind of did with the jardinera. We could put little pieces of that fruit on there. I just wanna do a little, I mean, you can, but I just wanna do a drizzle of the, of the mustard oil on it, the mustard uh, glaze kind of. Right, just it to get mixes, the flavor. Just to get the flavor from it. You put it on there, put it on the top of the bread, just so we have a little bit of that mustard flavor to lend to it. Okay. There you go. Put the top of that guy on. Now the other thing too, and the last sandwich that we made as well, can you eat them cold? Absolutely. You can eat this like this if we wanted, right? But heating a sandwich up to me brings it to a completely different dynamic exactly. to the sandwich. Gives it a little bit different flavor. Um, so cheese gets nice and melty. Get that mixes them with those with the meats much better. I, I kind of like heating them up, you know. So there we are. That's it. And then we can do is we could. I mean, you have a Teflon pan there, so we really don't have to put anything in there. Right. If we wanted to, we could put a little pat of butter, but we could just toast it up right in there. I don't know if we're gonna fit both. Yeah, yeah they'll fit. Mm -hmm. All right. And we'll press them down a little bit just to get them going. There you go. Wow. So we'll cook this for a few minutes on each side. Same as the last one, okay. two, three minutes on each side so we get a nice little color and you said the cheese starts to melt and flip it over two, three minutes on the other side and you're done. Okay. Don't go away when we get back, we're gonna taste these other sandwiches. See you then. Welcome back to Breaking Bread and I have Michael Viola with us and he's making some delicious sandwiches that I've never had in my life. So, these are the uh, These are the Cubans. Cuban muffaletta combination so okay. uh, those are ready to go we'll take them out we'll, we'll cut them up okay and this yeah. has the stuffed pork right this has the stuffed pork loin in it and it has some genoa salami mm -hmm. and some fontina cheese with some uh, jardinier the pickled vegetable salad that we chopped up and spread on there and some of the italian mustarda wow so, there's a corner for you i'll take a corner also I'm gonna get fat on this show. <laughs> you look like carbs. You look like me in a couple <laughs> in a couple hours. See, mm. there's a lot going on there. That's my 
what I like about it. I tasted the jardinier, then I tasted the pork, mm -hmm. then the cheese kicked in, and then the rosemary. <laughs> this is you good. Keep coming back, yeah. got you in layers, right? Again, one of my favorite things, this brings me back to just working at the deli. All those Italian meats, slicing them up, making sandwiches. We used to call it the heart attack special, not because it would clog your arteries, but because if our boss found out we were slicing all that expensive Italian meat and putting it on a sandwich, he'd have a heart attack. <laughs> it's a true story. That's good. I like that one. So I'll cut these recipes. We'll put them up on here. Okay. And we're going to get on our last one, which uh, isn't an Italian well, sandwich. Oh, fell out. That's I a think shame. you should eat that. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> That's what it's for. Huh. Um, all right, so the, the next and last sandwich, we're actually not going to heat this one up. Okay. Um, and basically, the idea behind this guy was in this day and age where everybody's getting their um, ancestry done and finding out what it. So I got mine back, and I'm like 81% Italian, Sicilian. Right. But a very small percentage of me is from Morocco, which is interesting because I've always kind of liked Moroccan spices and Moroccan things. So, two of my favorite things that I loved in Moroccan working in restaurants, we used to make. One is called harissa, it's a Moroccan condiment. Mm -hmm. And the other are preserved lemons. Both of them, found it easy to make, they just take time, right? I never had a preserved lemon. Yeah, it's a little it's a little interesting. It's a little acquired kind of taste. It's very, it's a sour, a little bitter, mm -hmm. almost like a pickly kind of thing. That's why we julienned it up so it's not, we don't want a ton of that on the sandwich. We want a little bit of it, just to kind of lend a little bit of bite to the sandwich. Mm. This is my favorite thing to make ever, harissa. So harissa, again. spicy. A little bit, but I don't make my, I make mine myself. The stuff that I find in stores, very, very spicy. Oh, what's in not there? a ton of flavor. This, believe it or not, four simple ingredients. Roasted red peppers, mm -hmm. cinnamon, honey, and cayenne pepper. That's it. Really? Thing is, is it takes time. So anything that's good takes time, right? right? Fast right. food is not exactly. good, and good food is not fast, right? Exactly. So, the thing behind this, very simple. You just gotta roast your own peppers. Right. Which I'm sure you've done gotcha. plenty of times. Take the skin off. You know, Take the skin off. Them up. Put them in a small pot. Yeah. Cover them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. Turn it on. Let it cook very slow for a long time. You don't want it to boil until they get very, very soft or mushad. They get very mushad, mushad, right? Take them out of the oil. Once they're mushad, you put them in a food processor and you blend it with the cinnamon, the cayenne pepper, and the honey. So again, you get sweetness. You get um, the heat. And it kind of blends it all, you blend that all together, and you can adjust that as much as or as little as those things as you want. If you like more cinnamon, you put more right. cinnamon. You can taste this one. I don't have a tasting spoon for you, but this one's not very spicy at all. I like the cinnamon more, um, the cinnamon flavor and the honey, the sweetness, and just uh, you'll see that the heat will come out very little bit at the end. But what it does is it complements the beef very well. Stuff like this goes very well with not only gamey meats, but also with gamey cheeses. Goat cheese, which we have going on the sandwich, or like a Manchego sheep's milk cheese. I tell you, very you taste that, that cinnamon. That cinnamon. Yeah, the cinnamon is, yeah. is key, and I use a really good cinnamon too. I use a Vietnamese cinnamon. And the honey, the cinnamon and the honey, yeah. the sweetness. So what we also do is I took an eye round, simple eye round that you can buy at a supermarket, two or three pound eye round, whatever, mm -hmm. rubbed it with some Moroccan spices. It has some cumin, some cayenne pepper, a little bit of paprika in there as well. Uh, and just roast it in an oven. Mm -hmm. Lower oven so you can keep more of an eye on I think I did 325, and then again, I mean, timing. People always ask about timing, but get yourself a meat thermometer. I pulled that out at 125 degrees, and that's, for me, it's perfect. Um, so yeah, we'll just cut this open. So we got that slice, we, we sliced it up on a machine so it's nice and thin. Eye round can be a little tough if you don't slice it thin. Right. So we sliced it nice and thin. And then what we have here is some, like I said, some goat cheese. So the goat cheese works really well with harissa and, and um, some of those other spices. So I'm gonna take some goat cheese and just spread it on the bottom. Okay. And if you want to do the same sure. on the other one, I'll give you the nice dip. There you go. That sounds good. I'm gonna grab... Now to me, it's kind of important not to lay the meat flat, and this is something I kind of, we can go for all sandwiches you make. We like to call this like blossoming the meat. You kind of put it on there and just let it fall. Right. Because what it does is, like, if you really want to get scientific with food, it creates kind of like air pockets. And then if you ever tasted wine or did a wine tasting class, they tell you to kind of slurp air over the exactly, wine. Exactly. Get... Well, this is kind of the same, the same concept. When you leave air pockets in there, it allows air to get around and it kind of opens up the flavor of the, of the sandwich a little bit. Right, exactly. Some people like to put it flat. Put it flat. You know, Sometimes it gets well, a little chewy right. that way, too. Okay. So you got the roast beef on there. And then what we're going to do, too, is we have, so we had these Preserved lemons. Okay. So these are preserved lemons. Again, this is something you can buy at specialty shops, grocery stores, but again, something very easy to do yourself just takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So if you take them, just lay a couple of pieces across. And basically all you do with these is you take fresh lemons, you wash them really good under the, under the water, 
You scrub them up with a vegetable brush if, brush if you have one. Score the bottom, make a little X with a knife at the bottom of the lemon, and then you pack them in a mason jar. You, you, salt the, you salt the X that you make, a lot of salt in there, and then you pack them in a mason jar, a lot of them. You right. close it, leave it in a cool, dry place, five, six weeks. Every other every week you rotate it. So just down, salt. So up and down. That's it. So a lot of salt and the lemons. And then what happens is the salt starts, it starts to pull out all those lemon, right, the lemon right. juice, and they just preserve themselves. So after wow. like six to eight weeks in a cool, dry place, you have preserved lemons. And you can put them into any, you can chop these up, put them in like a seafood salad or anything like that. So there we have that. We're gonna take a little bit of arugula, right? Let's move these out here. Take a little bit of arugula if you get me with some of that olive oil. We have it here somewhere, here we go. I'm gonna pour some olive oil sure. in there and I'm gonna toss this up. Just a little bit of olive oil and some uh, baby arugula, that's good. Toss it up in my I hand. I love arugula on sandwiches. I'm gonna put and it my pizza as well. Pizza? <laughs> I have a pizza oven and I like to make pizza, fresh pizza. And when it comes out, of, arugula, it comes out of the pizza oven, you throw some fresh arugula on cheese, top. cheese. Sounds good to me. You got to get, have to have your oven to cook some pizzas. I'm whenever you're ready. I'm here. And then lastly, we talked about that harissa a little while ago. So the harissa is done. And we talked about mayo and different types of mayo. All we have to do is take that harissa Mix it equal parts with some mayonnaise, and we have a nice harissa mayo. And this is our little Moroccan roast beef sandwich. There you go. So this is mayo with... Uh, this is mayo with that harissa condiment that right. we made before. Right, okay. Wow, that looks good. Looks perfect. Excellent. So we'll put this on top. Cut this guy in half. Wow, that looks good. <laughs> and this is just a regular semolina bread. This also, I like, uh, this also works good with like a pumpernickel bread or even a rye bread on that. It'll work really well. A little different. I never had a roast beef sandwich like this. <laughs> <laughs> a little different than what you used to. But that's my, the, the harissa mayonnaise. That cinnamon, it kind of warms it up. It warms it, it warms up your chest, really. Mm. And that gaminess with the goat cheese, it all kind of works really well together. It's one of my favorite things is that, that harissa. That harissa that mayo all over my glove now. That's okay. Finger looking good. <laughs> well, let me tell Who's you. over here? Michael, the next time I'm having guests over for lunch, would you come over and make some sandwiches? Absolutely, anytime, anytime. These are great. I don't think lunch will ever be the same. <laughs> <laughs> good, I'm glad. Make I'm... sure you leave me all these recipes. Absolutely. I want to thank you for being with us. Yeah. I congratulate you on your work. I commend you on continuing the tradition with your family and sending them to Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And let's pray that God continues to bless you in, in the work that you do in thank feeding you. people. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. It was great. Thank you. Let's say a prayer. Sure. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. We come together in a spirit of joy and happiness. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of family. We ask in a very special way to bless Michael's family, to keep them close together, keep them in good faith. May they continue to practice their faith and to share their faith with others. And we ask you, Lord, to bless all that we do in your holy name, through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for watching this episode of Breaking Bread. See you next time.